past few days, we have been talking about ionic bonding and how to name and write the formulas for those types of compounds. We are now going to switch gears and talk about covalent bonding. The two have nothing to do with each other. So you have a set of rules for ionic, and then you have a set of rules for covalent. After this video, we're going to then go into, um, I'm going to give you a bunch of different compounds, and you're going to have to figure out which one it is and go from there. That is where the students get the hardest time there. Okay. So covalent bonding, first off, the molecules, the compounds themselves, are called molecular compounds. Molecular compounds contain covalent bonds between the elements. So when you hear me say molecular, it means covalent. If you hear covalent, it means molecular. These two words are switched around. Okay, They can be used interchangeably. And covalent bonding, if you remember the first video from this unit, is between a nonmetal and a nonmetal. Okay, the naming for this is quick and easy, painless, okay? So you use a prefix to identify the number of atoms. There's no crisscrossing, there's no charges, there's nothing of that sort. So it's just looking at prefixes. Now prefixes are the part of the word that goes in front. So the hardest thing that you have to do is memorize these prefixes, which geometry has already helped with most of them because they're the same prefixes. Mono, one, di, two, tri is three, tetra, four, penta, five, hexa, six, hepta, seven, octa, eight, nana, nine, deca, ten. So if I said I had five hydrogens, you would use Penta. Okay, and if they're blurry up here, they're in your notes. Just look down. The other part of the rule that you need to know is the second element in the name ends with IBE. Pretty much just like your ionic bonding, you have to change the ending to IBE. Just the last part. Then the only exception piece that you've got to know is this. If one if only one of the first element, one of the first element. Do not use mono. Okay, this only applies to the first element. So let's jump into some examples. NO2. So pretty much you just need to know how many of each element you have, figure out the prefix, and then write it. So nitrogen. How many nitrogens do we have? There's no number there. That means we have one nitrogen. This two means we have two oxygen. So when you write the name, it should reflect this. So one nitrogen means mononitrogen. But you do not use mono for the first element. So this is just going to be nitrogen. Two oxygens. Two is di. And then oxygen, since it's the last element in the name, we're going to change it to oxide. So nitrogen dioxide. S3O9. So three sulfurs, nine oxygens. Prefix for three is tri. S means sulfur. Nine is nana, but with the A in nana, since you have oxygen coming after it, you drop the A. So it would just be non and then oxide. H2O. Should look familiar. Good old H2O water. Um, the chemical name for it, though, is 2 h one O, right? Two hydrogens, one oxygen. So two is di hydrogen, one oxygen monoxide. Now I do want you to look at these examples and see. Remember that you do not use mono for the first element but you do use mono for the second element. That typically is where students get things wrong, that pesky old mono there. Now we've got to do the opposite, just as easy. Carbon with no prefix means one carbon. 
tetra means four, hydride is hydrogen. So one carbon, four hydrogens. We now put that in chemical formula is C H four. There's no crisscrossing, there's none of that. It's exactly like you see it, CH4. So di is two, phosphorus is P, pent is five, oxide is O. So it's simply P two O five. Sulfur, no prefix, means one, sulfur. Tri means three, chloride is F. So S F three. You will now turn to page seventy two of your composition notebook and write and answer the following. So for one through ten, I'm giving you the formulas, you need to give me the name. Eleven through twenty, I give you the name, you need to give me the formulas.